I am Daniel Madison. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate you choosing to spend some time with me when maybe you've got better things to do. Not today. This is episode number six of the Madison Deck Review. Marty Gilbert's Hidden Leaves will get to these very soon. I want to address something right now though. Look at this t-shirt. Isn't this just a thing of beauty? This was a gift from Herbert Villanueva. Am I saying that right? Just a little bit of advice. If your surname's Villanueva, then God damn it, what a name. You should change your name to Herbert Villain. That is exactly what I would do. Herbert has been a fan of mine for a while and I got to know him and he's got the biggest heart in the world. Nobody sends me gifts, especially not this caliber. This is incredible. So this is the new Charlie Madison logo in gold foil printed on a black t-shirt. I cut the sleeves off and rolled them up like I always do. This is incredible. The problem is I can't wash it and I can't iron it, so I can't wear it too much. At least I can wear it on this video where it will last forever. Now I don't usually get sent gifts so it means a lot to me and it really does hurt but it really does, um, I'm, I'm really touched especially with the letter that you wrote. I'm not going to read it out because it's very personal but thank you so much. I do appreciate it. If you're not familiar with the Madison Deck Review it's very simple. If you've got new playing cards that you've released, if you've got playing cards that you want me to review in an honest and brutal manner on this channel all you have to do is send me at least two decks of playing cards to the address in this video description. Electric Picture House, the Tattoo Studio. I ask for at least two because I need to open one to review it on this channel. I give the second one away to somebody watching these videos. And if you send me any more than two, then it means I get to grow my collection and enjoy and appreciate the playing cards a little bit more. I cannot wait to review the Technique playing cards from Chris Severson. I'm a huge fan. That's going to be episode seven, but right now, episode six, Marty Gilbert's Hidden Leaves. I am Daniel Madison. This is the Madison Deck Review, episode number six. I am Daniel Madison, and this is episode number six of the Madison Deck Review, featuring the Hidden Leaves playing card by Marty Gilbert. If you don't know who Marty Gilbert is, then f*** you. <laughs> if you don't know who Marty Gilbert is, then piss off. If you don't know who Marty Gilbert is, Marty is a person of inspiration. He's also a professional magician out of New York, I believe. I've always been a fan of Marty and I'm especially a fan of these playing cards. Now, Marty sent me three decks quite a while ago and I haven't opened them because I want to save that moment to share with you guys in this very video. Now on first sight, just looking at the box before I've even opened these, I can see quite a few inspirations from these. They look like they've been designed to resemble an older, more classic deck of playing cards. Something along the lines of Steamboat and the Tally Ho, there's, there's a few Tally Ho inspirations in there. The blue is a really nice dark blue and I I might be wrong about this, but it looks like the exact same blue used for the Steamboat playing cards. The main design, the logo, if you will, is Marty holding a Royal Flush Hearts, uh, which makes up the back design with some really nice intricate patterns made up from leaves and what I'm guessing would be berries or grapes. I don't know, some kind of fruit. And when you look in the middle, I can see a direct nod to the Tally Ho playing cards. So these are Hidden Leaves number five, Fan Back number five, United States playing card company. They feel like they're probably crushed up. There's a little bit of space inside the box. Now, before I talk too much about these playing cards, let's go online, look at what Marty's written about these playing cards himself, so that himself himself so that I can give you accurate information without getting anything wrong. Beforemagic.com, so that's Marty's website, beforemagic.com. So the, the Hidden Leaves were a Kickstarter project as are 90% of playing cards that you see these days. And the website is very interesting, but we're gonna go straight to the Hidden Leaves playing cards and I'm gonna read directly what's written in the description. Hidden Leaves playing cards by Marty the Magician are painted pieces of cardboard with suits of dreams, lies, and love. Yes, man. Within the majestic blue back design lives the tree of life whose branches contain all of the colors of the rainbow and seasons of life and death. The roots, branches, leaves all represent the story of humanity's heartbeat. That is beautiful, Marty. 
Features known in the sea is just like playing cards used to be made. These unique features allow you to explore all sorts of forgotten card transformations. Hypnotize your audience with hallucinations of duplicates, renders well known pre-arranged stacks. Renders well known pre-arranged stacks completely invisible. What lovingly printed by the USPCC with our bespoke thin stock and premium smooth finish. Rider backs reimagined. That's what Dan and Dave Buck think. Embracing the rainbow, isn't that Skittles? Painted strokes drawn from and bringing color to life, lies and love. Quantity one, add to cart. What? Now before I open these, I just noticed something on the website itself. You can still get these, so these, well what happened? So you can still pick these up, Hidden Leaves Playing Cards at Marty's website, $18 a deck, second hand Hidden Leaves, $50 for second hand playing cards. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, I need to think about that. But right now, let's not waste any more time. We know everything we need to know about these. Let's open them up and have a look. The main thing that I've been excited to explore with these playing cards is that they don't have the index on any of the cards. At first, when a magician or a card man sees this, they might, they might think negatively about it and they might be a little apprehensive. And I think I am. I think like I'm not sure what to think. I'm probably thinking straight away I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss seeing the numbers. Uh, and I feel like a lot of things are being eliminated right from the start. There's a lot of things I can't do. But I'm trying not to look at these in a negative light. I'm trying to look at the positives, what I can do with these playing cards. But I guess that's something that I'm only going to discover by opening these up and playing with them, which is what I'm doing right now. So please be patient. Now when you open the tuck, there's a line on there, a sentiment directly from Marty. Play the hand, life dealt you no printing inside of the box because why would you if you're trying to make these look like old playing cards wow okay so the first thing that i see out of the box is the two jokers one we see i'm gonna assume that this is me um that's me dressed in a big red cape it's either me or one of those guys from star wars this is the devil himself hiding something behind his cloak marty tell me what he's hiding I'm very curious. The second joker is the image of Marty holding the royal flush against a red ocean and a red sky. Looks very dark, looks very religious. Putting those two cards aside, there are two more extra cards on top of the deck. Uh, one is, is Marty's business card, I guess. Marty the magician, nice touch. The second one is the image of Marty holding the royal flush, nice touch. And once you remove those four playing cards, I'm very, very confident to say that this is a crushed stock deck and I'm really, really interested in these right now because this is an ivory finish. This is a smooth finish. The cambric is nowhere to be seen. There's no air cushion finish. And this reminds me instantly and takes me straight to Steamboat playing cards as well as Jerry's for the way that they feel that nice smooth feeling. I don't know why more people don't do this. I don't know why I don't do it in fact when I'm such a huge fan. So a little moment of advice for people who are making playing cards. If you get the chance to make an ivory finish or a smooth finish, it's the future. I'm telling you it's the future of playing cards. So looking at the back design before anything, I am quite confident to say that these are not marked, but there's a marking system right away that I can see that would lend itself to these playing cards. Back design is what you would expect from a deck of playing cards that, that's designed to resemble a traditional and a classic deck of playing cards. The blue is perfect, it's like a, a much darker blue than you would expect. A, a blue that I would dare to say, or dare to call tattoo blue, simply because it's dark and it has that kind of carbon look to it. Now the leaves and the berries or the cherries or the, the whatever you want to call them going around the outside, they're so intricate, there's so much going on, a lot has been put into this and the berries offer up a very very accessible and easy way to mark these playing cards. All you need is a blue sharpie pen. The very middle of the cards, the inside between the two circles is a direct 
hint a direct nod to Tally Ho playing cards. I don't know if Marty's taking it directly, taking the direct design from Tally Ho, but it certainly is a nod to the Tally Ho design. And I'm not sure what it is, there's something about this, these playing cards that hint uh, the bicycle league back playing cards which used to be my favorite playing cards i think again it's that middle bit instantly the one thing that i love about these playing cards is that these are, are basically a direct advertisement for marty gilbert these are basically each one's a business card for marty gilbert he's got his logo himself holding the wall flush in the middle of the deck you see this playing card you know who it belongs to you know that these are marty's playing cards but coming from a brand in marketing point of view and, and background in this industry that is a really smart idea before we get to the madness that is this very deck itself let's look at the ace of spades it's a very interesting and old looking design looks like something that would be from the early 1900s and he has a tribute to me on the ace of spades he's written mad on there which is short for madison and he's also covered the spade symbol with a drawing of my therapist um, with a little pet dog and I do wish I knew a lot more about this deck but that's kind of the, the one of the beautiful things about getting a hold of a deck of cards that's full of mystery that you learn along the way I found that in in the previous five deck reviews that I've done I'm doing it very openly and very honestly and, and going into it without really knowing anything uh, beforehand and, uh, and uh, with the other deck reviews that I've done what's really interesting afterwards I learn more about the playing cards after I've done the deck review and it's really nice learning process so if I'm if I'm getting information wrong and I'm not giving accurate information feed me give it to me that's what I'm doing that's what I want and to be honest I'm just talking about the deck as I see it and as I experience it look at this deck of playing cards what a trip like the index that there are no how do you say it there are no indices there are no indexes the index have gone so there's no numbers uh, you can't tell which cards which from uh, from a fan from even spreading through you can't tell which cards which until you actually get it and take that card out and even then like I have to count those so that's the nine of spades but I had to double check it's a weird it's a weird thing I'm gonna have to get used to I really like the idea I love the sentiment and I love and I love the bravery of it because this is a risk releasing a deck like this to an industry who want to use playing cards for card games and for a lot of tricks and sleight of hand techniques and, and um, deceptions it is vital that you need that index there so it's a very brave thing it's a very strange thing i'm finding but surprisingly i i really love this deck so for those who haven't quite kept up with us uh looking at the playing cards there's no number and there's no index pip all you see is the full middle of the card the two spades it simply has two spades and this design follows through the entire deck until you get to the court cards which are, are really wild that's a really kind of pure red and these look really well hand drawn to resemble something from the early 1900s maybe sooner the same concept follows all the way through the deck the cards that stand out the most are, and it's good to see that you've that you've included me as the king of diamonds marty that's a really accurate drawing of of me so i do appreciate all the all the madison that you've put into this deck and it's also good to see that you put yourself in there as, as the king of hearts i'm a huge fan of this deck and this deck for me is in, entirely designed to be a spectacle of its own so i wouldn't take this out to do to show people magic tricks with um simply because of the confusion i think that, that people would get on on picking a card and trying to figure out what card it is uh, most of the time people don't even know what a club is and they have to look at the number and have to hammer it into their memory to, to remember what card they picked so doing tricks with this on a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't go down too well these are great for demonstrations though for deceptive demonstrations and I think um, you wouldn't see a cardist using these so I'm not going to disrespect them by do by attempting any flourishing or any cardistry not that I'm good at that anyway what I will do however though is sit down with these and have a practice with some card table sleight of hand and some card table deceptions just to see how these handle but also to see how they look on film
Hidden Leaves Playing Cards by Marty Gilbert. I'm gonna rate these playing cards a madness out of 10. I don't think it's fair for me to mark these playing cards down because they don't have the index, the indices, the index. I don't think it's fair to compare these playing cards to any other playing cards out there because they deserve and they demand their own unique place in the industry and in the playing card community for being so daring, for being so brave and for being different but at the same time retaining a really a really uh, pure and beautiful homage to a classic design and a classic approach to designing playing cards. I have so much appreciation for these playing cards now that I've used them and instantly I've got used to the index, the, the, to, the, to the missing indices on these playing cards. And one thing that speaks volumes about this deck of playing cards is I can't wait to actually take these out now and show them to people and talk to people about these playing cards and what they mean and, and, and why the indices are missing and how important that is to the practices of magic, sleight of hand deception, but also how this is encouraging creativity in me. It's encouraging me to rethink the way that I'm using these very playing cards. I'm thinking of all kinds of different ideas for effects for techniques, for magic tricks that I can use specifically with this deck of playing cards. So the fact that this deck of playing cards is encouraging me to be more creative, it's a, a huge win. Um, mad respect for these playing cards. Marty, I'm a huge fan of yours, as you know, and now I'm a huge fan of these playing cards. Going back to the, um, the second edition decks, the, not second edition, second hand decks that you sell and the more I think about that I think it's a smart idea because there are a lot of people out there who appreciate you for what you do with playing cards and to be able to own a deck of playing cards that has been used by you I want one of those I'd be proud to own a deck of playing cards that's been used by you and I'm quite tempted to borrow the idea and use it myself but I'm not sure how other people would feel about that so anybody watching this video let me know what you think about that i'm not sure how the general public how most people would think about that i know now how i feel i, I love a deck of cards that's been used by you there are certain people in the industry in the community who i look up to who i would love to own a deck of playing cards that they have used uh, so I'm curious on everybody's thoughts on that. So let me know. You can get these playing cards uh, from Marty's website. I'm gonna leave it, everything you need to know in this video description. I encourage you to pick some of these playing cards up if you haven't already. I'm a huge fan of these. I'm gonna use this play, this deck of playing cards for the next couple of weeks, uh, however long it lasts. And I'm gonna give away this very deck of playing cards sealed right here along with a brand new sealed unopened deck of Slight Club Madison and Slight Club playing cards to somebody watching this video right now. All you have to do, leave a comment in this video telling me why I should send you these playing cards. I'll pick the best answer and I will send these to one of you watching this video right now. That being said, the winner of the Tasty Playing Cards from the last video. By the way, Tasty Playing Cards. I've been using this very deck of playing cards since the last video and it's still in good condition. So it's a testament to the quality of these playing cards. The winner from the last video of the Tasty Playing Cards and some Madisonist Flight Club Playing Cards is So that is it from me for now. I'll be back soon to review these Technique playing cards by Chris Severson. Can't wait to open these ones. Today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. I'm doing a talk at the Bradford Magic Circle. The previous video to this one explains everything you need to know about that. And I will leave you with this discount code for 20% off of everything at my website, link in description. I'm Daniel Madison. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate that you've spent this much time with me. I will see you next time.